So, despite the outfit and the Victorian etiquette that we learned this morning and that we are trying to follow, this uh, might not be the most Victorian message you're going to hear, um, partly because I'm attached to, you know, a microphone. Also, I'm pretty sure that people named Elizabeth weren't the ministers in the Victorian <laughs> era, but we'll do our best. Also, you'll notice that um, the title of the sermon looks like it's pound sign more hope. Really what that translates to is hashtag more hope. Some of us hashtag, and some of you are thinking, what the heck does it mean to hashtag? We'll get to that. The idea of the hashtag can be confusing and somewhat difficult to explain. I googled explain hashtag to my mom to find the best way to explain it in words. They look confusing and they might seem unnecessary, but they're actually an important tool in how we communicate online. The use of the pound sign, or hashtag, can help us categorize and organize online content based on keywords. So if we were to hashtag this event, it would say, hashtag Victorian Sunday. And then you could click on that and you'd get all the cool Victorian Sunday things that are on the internet. Most of them posted by me. So you put the hashtag in front of a word or a group of word and they can be used to search for posts and content that also use that same hashtag. Hashtags are best when they are short and to the point much like the messages that the angels in the Bible bring to the people. They don't waste any time in telling the people what they need to know. Hashtags are short and sweet and, again, to the point, just like the angels. Every single time an angel appears to someone, they start with, do not be afraid. Despite the fact that so much of our paintings and drawings of angels are not our sweet, floating, cherub-like children with wings and dimples, those are not the angels of the Bible. They are large and imposing. They are awe-inspiring. God's angels could deliver messages of good, but sometimes bad. They could aid you or they could crush your enemies. So an angel appear, an angel of God appearing in front of you could cause even the calmest and most collected person to lose their cool. As we journey through Advent, we will be stepping away from the normal lectionary stops and talking a little more about the visits from the angels. I'm hoping that we've all caught on by now that this is in fact the first Sunday of Advent. We have lit the candle of hope. We have already begun to shine a little light into the darkness. Many times on the first Sunday of Advent, we hear John the Baptist preaching, which by the way is my favorite scripture for this particular Sunday because I get to stand up here and I get to yell, you brood of vipers, which is very Victorian and it's very angry and it's really fun. But we skipped that this year. It's okay. John the Baptist is the, is the cousin of Jesus, the son of Elizabeth and Zacharias. He is a little bit of a wild man, wearing camel fur and eating nothing but honey and locusts. His preaching is a challenge for Hope Sunday, as he is standing in the river calling the holy men of the temple a brood of vipers and telling everyone that God doesn't need them, that God can turn stones into a worshiping congregation. He tells them that someone better than he is coming, someone more holy, 
and that the one who is coming will separate the good from the bad. He issues a warning that if the people want to be in the good group, they better shape up, and they better shape up quickly. That's a tough text to preach when I'm trying to tell you about hope. But we didn't read that scripture. Instead, we heard the story about the messenger of God appearing to Zacharias, John's father. It's a bit refreshing. Normally, we are about John's announcement of Jesus on this Sunday, but today we're talking about God's announcement of John. Zacharias and Elizabeth were not young. They had not had children, and more than likely, they had probably given up any hope of having one. They were elderly. And while they might have wanted children at one point, they were probably content to live their lives without a family. But as we have seen week after week, story after story, verse after verse, God can always make a way. Even if it seems impossible to us, to God, nothing is beyond reach. For John's parents, whatever hope they may have had for having a child was long gone. They thought they had no choice but to accept that God wasn't going to give them a child. Even though they knew about Sarah and Abraham who had had a child when they were old, Elizabeth and Zacharias had never been given a promise like Abraham and Sarah. Looking to their ancestors, wouldn't have been a source of a lot of hope. There were so many reasons for them to have given up the hope of having a baby anytime soon or ever. But God does things in God's time. Just when the hope of having a child was all but gone, God sent the messenger with more hope. God's angel brought a message of better things on the way to Zacharias and Elizabeth. This very much could be a sign of what John the Baptist would do for us. John the Baptist, who was the one who would make a way in the wilderness for the coming Messiah. John the Baptist, who would bring more hope to a people on the brink of losing what little was left for them. The people had been waiting and waiting and waiting for generations. They were waiting, hoping and praying, hoping and praying. And the more time that went by, the darker things became. With each new conquering kingdom, each new pain and each new attack, each new loss, hope became harder and harder to hold on to. When John the Baptist sees the holy men, the leaders of the temple, and he yells to them, a brood of vipers you are, and begs that if the people don't change, there will be a reckoning to pay. He is also saying, he is also shouting that someone better, more powerful, a fulfillment of the promises is on the way. He isn't just bringing fire and brimstone, but he is actually bringing more hope. He is shining the light into new places. In the story of our angel, there is one part that doesn't feel like it belongs with the greeting of do not be afraid, for when poor Zacharias tries to argue with the angel, tries to suggest that God's plan might not work, when he doubts, the angel takes away his ability to speak. The angel punishes him in a way that isn't easily reconciled with do not fear. After all, this is part of the story. It doesn't mean that we should never argue with God or with God's messengers for fear of possible punishment. Is that the lesson? I don't think that is. I don't think that's the message. This is a story of hope. In a lot of ways, this is the first story that we should hear when we talk about the Christmas narrative. John's birth is a story of more hope. It is a story of seeing room for a bigger hope and a brighter light than you ever thought possible. The angel doesn't 
take away his voice as a warning of what punishment could befall us if we doubt or worry. Instead, perhaps we could view his silence as a strange sort of blessing. We out without the, the ability to protest, perhaps he could be more present in what was happening. Without being able to argue and make noise, he was able to witness and be there as even more hope came into his life. Sometimes our doubts and our worries allow our despair and fear to overshadow our hope. It might have been long, long ago that John the Baptist was born, long ago that he made a way in the wilderness, long ago that he brought us the message of hope, of even more hope. But the world is still a place that can be overwhelming. There are still things that cause us to worry. There are very real threats, very scary things out there, out beyond these walls. Sometimes there are scary things happening within the walls of sanctuaries. There are a lot of really good reasons to worry about the future, about families, about children, about grandchildren. There are more reasons to worry than there is time to list them. But there are still messengers of hope. There are still signs of good things to come. And there is still reason to believe that God is not only paying attention, but actively doing things to make the world better. The trick is to keep an eye out for them, to perhaps close our mouths and open our eyes. The trick is to pay attention to the things that bring even more hope into the world. It's not always easy, because it's easy to get distracted by everything, but that's how we do it. At the beginning of the sermon, I talked a little bit about hashtags. Had the angels had access to Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, I imagine that Gabriel might have posted a picture of Elizabeth and Zacharias, their smiling faces, might have been accompanied with the caption, soon two will become three, hashtag new baby, hashtag heavenly messenger, hashtag do not fear, hashtag more hope. I want to leave you with a challenge as we go through this week, this week of hope, to look for more, more hope. There is room for hope in the world, and there, and, and there will be more room for more hope and more hope and more hope the more we see it. Find the places that you see hope in this world. Where do you see God bubbling up? Where do you see the light of God shining through whatever darkness you face? Look for something every day, and I challenge you to look for it because I think you can, and I think you will find it if you just look. So, if you are a person who uses hashtags, Post and share the places you find more hope. Share this hope with the church's pages and use the hashtag more hope. If you are on social media, you will be able to see that I will also be doing this and I will share and hashtag all the hope that I find too. Find something hopeful and share it with those around you. Now, if you are not a hashtagger, are not free to not do this a challenge because you know people you see people go to them share your the hope you find with them talk to them and see where you can find hope together it might even be as simple as smiling at everyone you see and saying good morning keep looking for hope it's out there there is always more hope. When the people were just about out of hope is when God and God's messengers showed up in the world with yet more hope. It is important that we try to find more for ourselves, but also that we share that with one another. There is room for hope, and then we'll find there's even room for more hope. Amen.